Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. Uh, in this video, we're going to start our first of the series with regards to building uh, a camera slider. For those of you that might remember, um, <coughs> excuse me. In a previous video, we worked on this cam camera slider where we used rods and we used the um, uh, 28B, was it? Yeah, 28BYJ-48 motor uh, to build a little cam camera slider and some uh, threaded rods and stuff. Worked okay, I guess. Uh, rather slow and kind of jerked apart, I guess, if we'd have mounted it on something. But... Uh, what I wanted to do was, you know, seeing a number of uh, YouTube videos on the internet with a little bit better design, uh, decided to give it a shot to build um, a belt version. And so this is the first attempt with some maker rail. So a couple different things. With the, uh, one of the big problems, I think this was a 32 per inch threaded rod, and the motor just turned so slow with regards to 32, I mean, so it'd have to literally th turn 32 times for it to go one inch, and that might actually even be only a half an inch. I forget if you have to double it or not. I can't remember off the top of my head. But this moved very, very slow, so uh, really not overly practical. So what we're doing in this case is we're going to use a belt design. Now, I'm still waiting on the belts to come from China. I ordered an entire spool because there's a couple projects I'm doing. However, let's take a look at the underneath to see where this is really coming together. So again, we're using the maker slide as the linear motion. Uh, we've designed up this mechanism. Um, actually, I saw a couple different ones on the internet that gave me the idea to do this. Uh, so I, I mixed this one up from a couple different things. I wanted to mount the board and the servo, or it's not servo, sorry, stepper, close together here because what I'll do is actually uh, so I need four pins for this, and then I need two pins for power. Um, so what I'm going to so that so out of an Ethernet cable, that's six pins. So that leaves me two pins. So what uh, I'm going to do is also um, I have one on the bench. Let me get one real quick. Is get a switch. Is what we're going to do is I'm going to mix up a plate for a micro switch. So uh, there'll be micro switches mounted to each end. Actually, I never thought about it, but I could have mixed these right on this plate, and I think that's actually what I'll do is I'm just going to redo these and then mount the switch. So, so when the switch impacts it right here, it turns on, then put one right here, and when the switch impacts it, it just basically stops it or makes it go uh, back and forth uh, depending on what we're going to do. So, and then basically, I guess what I'm trying to say with this is, so I got six wires here. I'll have two extra on the Ethernet cable because we have eight. So I'll be able to put these in series and run the two back to a control panel um, and have this as all one integrated unit and be able to plug this together. I'm going to probably use a DB9 connector. Uh, to connect all this so I can just plug this in and, and I, I think what I'm going to do is another thing on the internet I saw was a lot of folks are using like a DB9 connectors uh, with the Arduino and everything just to make an easy connection you know male female old RS-232 type stuff and I'm thinking that's what I'm going to use in this case too just to kind of make it a little bit universal as I move through and do different things uh, to just make it easier because what I want to do with the Arduino and um, I got that over here. Is the Arduino unit? I've actually got a touch screen unit, and what I want to do is I want to build a generic um, control panel because, <coughs> excuse me, with a lot of these projects, it doesn't make a lot of sense, at least to me, to to just keep re-engineering different solutions. So what I want to do is come up with one basic control module design, then use like the DB25 or, or sorry DB9, etc., as being the interface to this mechanism, and then I can use it for multiple projects uh, instead of you know buying one of these for for each and every project that I decide to do. So just again some uh, uh, pointers on that. 
A uh, couple of things I did start out talking about and got sidetracked a little bit. So one of the changes here is I did design a gear for the stepper. Um, I will have this out on Thingiverse and a link in the blog post. Uh, so it, it's a 20 tooth gear. Uh, I've made it a little bit bigger than the belt to sort of align and stick out because this is a rather short shaft uh, on, on the 28 BYJ motor. So you can kind of see it, it, it should line up roughly with that. And then the idea is, is this should should make it a little bit more rapid move. The motor is geared down, so the motor actually produces a fair amount of torque for what it is. And uh, I'm going to move back and forth. Now, in, in full disclosure, I do not expect this probably to be able to move a bigger uh, DLR camera. Uh, you know, my intent is to use a smaller GoPro, something like that. You know, as I put a ball head mount on here, so the GoPro will mount on here, or uh, for example, I'm using the Ricoh Adventure camera to actually to film this. This could mount on there. Uh, a couple different things. So uh, we also have belt clips at the end. So the belts will loop through here, come up here and tighten, and then the motor will run them back and forth on here. So again, make your wheels all very smooth. So. Uh, uh, so far, interesting project. The other thing I'm going to do is work on some feet for this, design up some feet to go into these rails. I am probably um, going to design something to go in here with a uh, quarter inch 20 turn thread design so I can mount it on a tripod. What I want to do is in the uh, bigger version, once I prototype this, because I want to prototype this in a 500 millimeter design. Uh, first, as you see here, about 20 inches, which isn't a lot. Um, in the probably bigger version, I'm going to do, I'm going to want to go to about a thousand millimeters so that it's closer to about a three feet, a little bit over three feet, I think, to give it a little bit more effect. And then um, be able to, again, mount it on a tripod um, because I'm still debating um, in, in, in photography terms, the heavier tripods have a three eight uh, inch. Uh, bolt and the smaller ones have a quarter inch. I'm thinking because especially this one quarter inch would do well um, but I'm thinking if I do go to the thousand millimeter I probably want to go to the three eighths so I might just skip the three eighths and go to a thousand but I mean sorry skip the quarter go to a three eighths and uh, just go that route but we'll see how it goes. Anyways on the blog I'm going to set up links to all the parts you see here I'm also going to put the, the part details together as soon as I finish them up uh, in Tinkercad and post them up there. Like I say, after looking at this, I think I am going to modify these to uh, have a lip that comes across on these to uh, hold the switches. So when the, the uh, gantry comes across, it impacts the switch and then vice versa. I probably have to stick them out a little bit or something. So again, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but just so you get an idea how it's coming together and the start of the project so you can kind of follow along. Uh, again, waiting on the timing belt to come from China. Uh, it was a real cheap price. I think I got like 60 feet for around 15 or 16 dollars. So again, I'm building several different projects. So I definitely need the belt. And so... Uh, Anyways, uh, keep watching. If you like this, please hit like below, subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing quite a bit more. We're going to get started probably pretty soon on our laser cutter build also, which is going to use the same basic tech as this. Uh, again, we're going to use NEMA 14s, I think, to do the linear motion on rails. And uh, that's coming up pretty soon, so stay tuned. Cheers.